Hey there, stackers. Happy Wednesday. And if you missed Monday's show, this is normally the week that we take off, but we're not doing that. Instead, lots of people asked if we were going to play our live shows that happened recently. And the answer is, heck yeah, we're going to do it. And today we're live from Kansas City, Missouri. Joel Goldberg opened for us with his Rounding the Bases podcast. You'll hear that if you could just go back a few days in the feed. You can listen to his phenomenal interview with uh, Bob Kendrick. And by the way, out of all the interviews that we had either on the Stacky Benjamin stage or our partners in any of the three cities, I think that was the top interview of all for me. I'm a baseball fan, though. So Bob Kendrick is the president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum in KC. So this was great. We had some really inclement weather. There was a tornado that had touched down before that. So we had... I think 60 to 65 people in Kansas City. Great considering all of the conditions and uh, stuff going on around there. And and some people traveled from a long way. We had a gentleman from Oregon who came. We had uh, people come from Iowa. It was a really fun group. And the show, as I mentioned on Monday, continued to evolve. You're going to hear some fantastic stories on today's show. Well, enough foreshadowing. Thanks to Bloom with three O's and TIAA for making this a reality for us. I'm thrilled that we were able to do this. It still is beyond me that we got to have so much fun with so many people around the country. Let's do this. This is our Kansas City, Missouri live show. Live from Kansas City, Missouri, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. Barbecue fans and cheese lovers, I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and today we're bringing you an action-packed show from Fountain City, USA. Leave this part to me, Doug. Today we welcome the Penny Pension mom, Tracy Fobes. From NBKC Bank, Fintech strategist, Zach Pettit. The voice of the Kansas City Royals pre- and post-game shows, Joel Goldberg. Maker 100 winner from Children First CEO CEO Kansas Kathleen Webb, and featuring the military money expert Lacey Langford, our engineer extraordinaire Steve Stewart, providing the stacking Benjamin sound 11 year old Garrett Fobes, and from Bloom our co host Chris Costello. Our guest co-announcer, me, Carrie Olsen. And now, three guys who are full of barbecue, Boulevard beer, and themselves, Chris Costello, Joe, and say it with me now, folks, O-J-J-J-J-G. Hey, Kansas City, how you doing? What's up? We are so happy to be here. Check out this crowd, OG. Yes, fantastic. Kansas City is awesome. Thank you for coming. It's much, much wetter here than <laughs> advertised. No, it's pouring in Dallas, too. We had a tornado watch today. Yes. I thought, you know, they always... Welcome to Kansas. Oh, yeah. not in Kansas right now. Yeah, yeah. Dorothy always says, uh, you're not in Kansas, but we're in uh, Kansas City and tornadoes and everything. Yes. We want yeah. to roll out the red carpet for you. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. And Chris Costello from Bloom, everybody. Thank you. Bloom. Yes, Bloom. 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 The first time we did that, by the way, Chris hadn't heard the show yet. The first time Len Penzo rolled that out with the Bloom. And he's like, what the hell? That sounded is... really negative. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it's like, we're actually a lot happier than that. We're like, no, it's a term of affection, yeah. man. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about Bloom. Well, Bloom, uh, well, for, this is the easiest way to describe Bloom. Raise your hand if you have a 401k or have ever had a 401k. Hold it up in the air, okay? Now, leave it in the air if you knew what you were doing with that account. That's the response we normally get right there. So five years ago, we started a company to help those people that didn't know what they were doing. They're based right here in Kansas City. Based right here in Kansas City. That's so awesome. We're going to talk about all the... Bloom people here. Raise your hand. Stand up, We do got the Bloom crowd. There's the Bloom crowd. Hey, Bloom. I tried to come up with the name Bloomers, but 
that didn't really stick. Right. Well, Michelle, Michelle right. didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, where do you go with that? Like early bloomer, creative. late bloomer? I don't so. He's not the creative director. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's the idea not. guy. Definitely not. This show is also brought, also brought to you by our friends at TIAA. Ken's here from TIA. Wave, Ken. Yes. TIA is uh, celebrating 100 years of being a different type of financial services company, serving millions of people. And if you know anything about TIA, you know those people dedicate their lives to serving people across the academic, research, cultural, medical, government, nonprofit fields. They're committed. They're commemorating, easy for me to say, 100 years by celebrating the people who've inspired others and made a positive impact in the world. By the way, we're going to have one of those people, Kathleen Webb, up here in just a second to tell her individual story and and I can't wait for you to hear it. Who started that company? It, a little guy. You might have heard of this guy, Andrew Carnegie. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yes. He did well, too. Like yes. That. TIA also held, uh, uh, on October 1st, TIA honored 100 difference makers with a $10,000 donation. If you're not good at math, that's they gave a million dollars to people. Where should we say that? Like a million dollars. One, One million. million dollars. We should do it that way. Uh, totaling a million dollars to people making a difference. They also held a company-wide 100 Days of Difference campaign through which TIA employees participated in 341 projects across 51 offices. For more on the Difference Maker 100, TIAA Difference Maker 100.org. And of course, we'll have that in the show notes. Very good. Awesome. Oh, gee, you ready to roll on this thing? I'm ready. Let's you do guys it. ready to roll on this thing, Kansas City? <sighs> Let's get this party started, Richie. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show, our stacking Benjamin's headlines. I love this little trick we'll say while we're here live. Have you noticed we call like every different segment your favorite part of the show? <laughs> <laughs> this is your favorite part. No, by the way, here comes your favorite part. Are we recording little, this, by the way? We, we are recording. We okay. shouldn't. T- we got to cut that out, Richie. <laughs> yeah, that's just for us here. That's not what you say, though. You say, take that out, Steve. Oh. Take that out, Steve. Right, right. Steve is the one that gets all the... Where is he at? There he is. Over there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hiding. Steve gets all the jokes that nobody hears. We tell a joke. We start laughing. We're like, yeah, take that out. <laughs> take that out. Yeah. And cut. Right. Ah, but to kick off the show, we have uh, somebody who I'm so happy I get to call a good friend of mine. She is based here in Kansas City. She helps people nationwide score deals and avoid commercial problems that other people have when they don't read her blog. Ladies and gentlemen, the penny pitch and mom herself, Tracy Phobes. <laughs> Okay, the elephant in the room. Yeah. This awesome guitar player who we're going to hear all night. Yep. That's your son. That is my son. That was just so awesome. We got Garrett Phobes over there. Yep. On a school night. On a school night. Yeah. Don't tell his teacher. Get home and clean your room, kid. I'm sending sending this video to my kids. Like, (laughs) what's your excuse? What's your excuse, kids? Well, here's the funny thing about Garrett. He's all YouTube taught. No kidding. Yeah. So, and that's, that's how I found Garrett. I was, you and I are Facebook friends. Yes. I mean, we're friends, but we're Facebook friends. And one day we've got Garrett sitting on the sofa in his pajamas and he's like wailing on some yeah. Van Halen song or something. Yeah. He was just, he happened to come downstairs and he was sitting there and he just started playing. And I thought, oh my gosh, Mike, stop. I got to get this on video. So I put it there and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm Facebook in this thing because <laughs> it just was so good. And then you get a call from me. And then like 30 seconds later, I get this message pops up from Joe. Hey, he needs to play our Kansas City show. <laughs> I, you see talent, you grab it. That's right. Right. Absolutely. 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 But, but, but let's talk about you because you help people score deals. And I want to talk about this town because before my daughter moved here, I, di- I didn't know. I was telling Bob Kendrick, who uh, you'll hear in the feed, by the way, uh, we're going to have Joel Goldberg show rounding the bases following this one in the feed. But uh, Bob Kendrick from the Negro Leagues Museum. By the way, how great was Bob, everybody? Awesome. Wasn't he fantastic? Amazing. amazing. That guy was amazing. But there's all these cool things here that you can do. Tell people some of the cool things you can do in Kansas City. Okay, so one thing I think a lot of people don't know about, back in like the 60s, have you guys ever seen Casino, right? Okay. Yes. So there is a gangster tour that you can take in Kansas City. And on that tour, you will find bullet holes still in Union Station. Really? Yeah. It's pretty cool. That's that's awesome. Yeah. So there's lots of other things you can do. Um, well, money nerds, right? So you got to go to the Federal Reserve Bank, got to check it out and see all the who's, cash. Who's been there? Anybody been there? Good tour? Kind of cool place. Yeah. Uh, Boulevard Beer. 
I did Come that on. one. Really? And you can't. Uh, 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 Chris, have you done the Boulevard Beer Tour? Maybe once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> they do get free free samples at the end. They do say, get free samples yeah, at the end. If you do anything, you just go for the samples, right? As a penchi, penny pension mom, you'd appreciate the fact that I'm trying to get free samples. Exactly. The right. Exactly. They're like, sir, three times on the tour. Yeah. We've seen <laughs> you Same three afternoon. times this week. <laughs> Shh. Our secret. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> but, 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 but that tour is so fun. I remember at the beginning of the tour, they said... Um, The woman starts with so much humor, like I've done winery tours, and this is way funnier. She started off with, so there's barley and hops, like in a barrel, which nothing big about that. And then rain gets in, right? Maybe some yeast. I don't know how beer's made. I'm making this up. But all this stuff gets in the barrel. She goes, that's not the amazing thing. The amazing thing is somebody goes... You know, we got to drink that. <laughs> right? Exactly. At some point. Yeah, At some right. point, somebody said that. Yeah. I always think that about, like, eggs. Like a chicken lays an egg. Like, really? This chicken drops something on the ground? I think I'm going to crack it open and eat it? I mean, I got to have some of that. that. Right? Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good point. What else we got in Kansas City? Um, there's also lots of family things. One thing that's really cool is the second Saturday of each month in the Kansas, at the Power and Light District, we have family fun days. You can come down with your kids, have a lot of fun things to do, you know, because Kansas City's not just for grown-ups. A and lot cost of for that? Free. Wow. Who's done that? Anybody done that? Oh, there. Uh, See, we got an opportunity, opportunity. here. Yeah. That's good. Got kids, you guys need to definitely check yes. that one out. Yes. You always know the free stuff. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The free stuff's great. Nelson Atkins is amazing. I'm excited. I get to We go. went there. That's an art museum in town yeah, for people is. out of town. Yep. It's, it's really awesome. Um, and, of course, if you're here, it is sacrilegious to leave Kansas City without tasting the world's absolute best barbecue. Oh, OG? No. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to have a, we'll have to have a snack Texas. here because I'm thinking no. I went to um, a FinCon conference with Joe a couple years ago. We were in uh, Charlotte, all right? Meh. And they served barbecue. And I was like, yeah, this is disgusting. Sorry. <laughs> this is not barbecue. I don't know what this stuff is you're trying to serve me. Let's have a road trip to Kansas City and let's get some real barbecue. That's a, uh, OG? No. Uh, Texas barbecue is where it's at. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City barbecue? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. See? That's what I'm talking about. Texas brisket? Texas brisket. All right. Yep. All right. Deal. Yeah. So the other thing I really like to tell people about Kansas City is um, one of the websites that a lot of our visitors use that locals don't think about is the visitkc.com website. Lots of free things to do listed there. And one really cool thing they have on there is a deal section. If you go in there and you sign up, there are a lot of times two-for-one offers. Oh. And you don't have to be a visitor to use a coupon to visit a venue here. So sign up, and you can get those alerts. They've got a list of different places. You can get military discounts and things like that. So a lot of times when we live in a community, we don't think about looking at it from the outside in. That's so true. I, when I lived in Detroit... I, I didn't go to half the stuff there. And then I leave, and I'm, every time I go, go back, back, I'm like, oh, i got to yeah. visit all these places. Yep. Well, that's what you're doing now about your move coming back to Michigan. You're thinking about all the things in Texas that you didn't go to, <laughs> that's, which, is, which is why you're, you're, you're talking about all these great uh, national parks that we have down there and everything. You're that's like, right, you I gotta go, go check that out. i got to go nah, back. I'll do that later. i got to go back to Texarkana and see both, trans, both uh, great things. Both great things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So another thing I like to tell people when it comes to finding things to do in Kansas City, who here knows of Groupon? Anybody yes. knows Groupon? Yeah. Guys, you got to check that little thing out. There are so many amazing deals. And it's not just things to do. It's food. It's events. It's activities. It's things you can buy in Kansas City. And one of my favorite ones to do is if I have to travel... I hate parking at the airport because it's like seven hundred and twenty-seven dollars a day, right? right? And thirty approximately, cents. right? I just round. I'm rounding that up. Um, but you can get really good discounts to get someone come pick you up at your house, drop you off curbside, come pick you back up and take you home for less than what you'd pay if you went directly to their site to book it. That's a great idea. Yeah. So when it comes to things to do in Kansas City, check out Groupon. So it's just, it's right there. It's on your phone. Um, in fact, I've used it when I've traveled to different cities and pulled coupons up and done things with my kids right on the spot. There's something else people might want to check out. You might know a website where they can find a bunch of this stuff. 
I don't know. I maybe have the <laughs> like inside track on that. A Kansas City-based website? Perhaps. Tell me about the Penny Pitch and Mom. So the Penny Pitch and Mom um, is a website I started just about 10 years ago, believe it or not. And my whole goal was to help families just like us get out of debt. We'd paid off $37,000. And part of that was me figuring out how to budget at the grocery store. Because let's face it, in Kansas City, our coupon policies suck. Okay? I'll just be blunt. So I had to find a way to work through that. And so I started figuring out how to make these deals work. Had friends who said, hey, share that with me. And I said, okay. And a friend goes, start a blog. I'm like, what the hell is a blog? I Googled, what is a blog? Here I am 10 years later. But now I share deals that I find on there in our Facebook group to help families just like mine do the things that they want to do without going broke. And I'm so happy you started the blog. And I'm so happy that I get to know you. I am too. Thank you. Tracy Phobes, everybody. I think the lesson there, no matter where you are, OG, is to just don't go into some, you know, museum or wherever you go. Look for the discount first. Always be a visitor, no matter where you are, even in your own hometown. I like that. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Our next guest, there is a technology, big technology conference and festival going on. You guys know that here in Kansas City uh, happening? And what? uh, Hold on. Uh, This, I got to take this call. Awkward. Uh, This is this is mom calling. Mom and we didn't tell her we were leaving town. So, uh, do you guys mind if we take a call from mom? Is that okay? Uh, I'm sorry, we got to... Richie, can you put this on speakerphone so everybody can hear it, please? Uh, Mom? Hello, Joe? Mom? Mom? Joe, is that you? Where are my glasses? The number's on this phone. Joe? This this is every time. Mom? Mom, I'm here. Oh, hey, honey. I was just doing my taxes, and I need some help. They say this is the 1040 EZ, but I think it's the 1040 take all my money form. (laughs) That's what I think. I, th- I think a lot a of people think tardy that. on her taxes. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe a little late, a little late, mom. Can you come upstairs and help me out? Uh, we uh, are out right now. Oh, where are you? We we're at the library. We're we're sure. at the library. Right. Can you help me file something? I could use about another six feet extension. I don't want to go near those IRS agents. <laughs> It's that's not an extension that, cord. Yeah, that's not a way it works, Mom. It's not. Doesn't work like that. Here, do I have to claim my poker winnings? It depends on how much. <laughs> oh, what about the gold Lynn Penzo gave me for my birthday? It was nice of him to give you gold, but you don't have to claim that. Mm, the tequila I brought back from Mexico. The, the tequila is all Gone yours, anyway. Mom. That was great. Mm, the stuff from that trip to Colorado. We don't talk about Ooh. the trip to Colorado, <laughs> Mom. <laughs> we leave that one alone. That's, uh, yeah. Oh, you know, that's funny. I had this weird idea, and this is just plain crazy, but you boys were having barbecue in Kansas City. Ha! What? Can you imagine that? What? Somebody what? edit us out. What? Why would you get that idea, Mom? There's... Uh, oh, well, it just seemed like it might be what was happening. So what are you boys doing down at the Texarkana Library? Uh, 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 Mom, we're uh, we're helping OG study for his uh, uh, blood blood test, right? It's just hard because we don't know who his dad is, but we're but we're that's what we're working on. Oh, that sounds horrible. Is that Doug? Uh, uh, yeah, Mom. Yeah, it's it's me. Uh, I'm right here. You know, I hate speaker phones. Tell Doug that his order for foot fungus neutralizer just came in today. Easy. Yeah, no, Easy. but I need Calm that. Down. It, we got a show to finish. <sighs> You'll be okay. okay. Is OG there studying too? Yep, I'm studying hard. Got an A plus on my blood test. <laughs> Ask him about this IRA rollover line on my tax form. Is an IRA rollover like an apple turnover? Uh, more like a cherry turnover. Yes, yeah. Mom. Same thing. Very close. Okay, huh. You boys haven't been drinking, have you? Just since noon. <laughs> what? <laughs> she, Are there she got like eyes or? everywhere, that lady. That's well, scary. all right, sweetie. Time to head out for some line dancing with Gertrude. Well, we got to go too, Mom. We got some people to see about a thing, so uh, we got we got to go. Okay, and Joe. Yeah, Mom. 
Please be safe coming home from Kansas City. And tell those folks you're with that I love them all. And one more thing. Yeah, Mom. Have them call their mothers. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thanks, Mom. Oh. Love you. Bye-bye, bye, sweetie. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye, Mom. That's Mom. How about that? You can't put anything by that woman, OG. No, she... The problem is she has a cash business, though. That's why she's <laughs> it's true. It is. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about the cash business. No, we don't. She grills every person coming down the basement. You've been down to the basement. Oh, yeah. You met mom. She's yeah. You don't mess with mom. Right. Uh, our next guest, you also don't mess with. Uh, that's a horrible transition. <laughs> he, he is he is uh, the guy in charge of uh, fintech for MBKC Bank, and he also is the guy in charge of this huge technology festival going on downtown. Ladies and gentlemen, our friend Zach Pettit. <laughs> Well, look at the guy. He's ripped. <laughs> How are you, man? How are you doing, guys? Oh, were you going to shake his hand? I was going to shake his hand. Can I shake your hand? Everybody Good to see you again. Can I high five you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Off hot. Yes. Yeah. How are you, man? Doing well. So you've been a busy guy. How many how many panels have you run in the last two days at your festival? So today's been a pretty easy going day. I've moderated three today, um, and yesterday was pretty Slacker. easy going too. We only kind of did a mayor debate, uh, introduced a whole group of intru- entrepreneurs there. Um, you know, it's been nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Yeah. I just I just actually thank the Lord for the Bloom team because I got a r- ride from the bank down here after having been drinking for a while. So nice job. Oh, good. So there you go. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, the guys have been drink- right the guy who's been drinking for a while is on Help with stage. a 401k and driving. <laughs> yes. yes. That's great. Uh, uh, how did you get involved in fintech? Well, it's actually pretty funny that Chris is up on this stage because he played a pretty big part in it. Um, kind of two ways. One, uh, and I won't go too deep into it because we're having a good time, but my family had a really hard finances when I was growing up. And that kind of led me to just asking the question around what specifically caused all that? Why are you having to go to payday loans, things like that, and just created a lot of questions in my life. Um, the second piece is that I did an internship in college at a uh, investment management firm that will remain nameless. Uh, and I got to experience what fiduciary or not fiduciary and everything else in that world actually means. And then I was lucky enough to meet Chris and uh, really, I guess it was my senior year in college, I joined Bloom and that's kind of how I got into this world and it's all just kind of snow bolt from there that's awesome and if and if uh people don't know what fiduciary is oh, you you want explain you, no you want to look that also up. you just got a check mark on your bingo card <laughs> <laughs> and that's the key thing right there absolutely yes this really is, i would most i would recommend looking it up on urban dictionary specifically fiduciary on urban dictionary i'll leave it at that oh nice good pro tip right there hey <laughs> so you you guys, MBK Casey Bank, though, you guys are helping a lot of fintech companies. And I thought we'd do this kind of Today Show style. You know how with the holidays coming up, they talk about like the, the gift for Uncle Lou who can't save a dime and the gift for Aunt Louise who's in everybody's business anyway? I thought right. we'd do that. Let's do it. So, so, so let's do this like a gift-giving guide of future things that are coming to devices for people. Who it. do we got first? So to set the stage a little bit, Found City Fintech is a part of NBKC, and that's the accelerator that we're running. So the six companies, the six products that we're about to talk about, all are coming, have all groups that have moved to Kansas City to kind of grow their companies inside of Kansas City. But, but, but they're originally from all over the nation. Yeah, all the way from, well, not even just inside the nation, San Francisco to New York, everywhere in between. And we also have a group from Australia that's moved to Kansas City and made this their home base for perpetuity. How cool is that? Isn't that cool? It's right here. Exciting. Yeah. Good, st- good stuff happening here. All right. Who do we got? So... Ooh, excuse me. Easy Kicking it off a little bit. Take a breath. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting comfortable up Settle here. We'll down. get there. It's We're gonna the big stage. It. Welcome to the Zach yeah. Pettit Show, everybody. Yeah. Honestly, really what it is, Chris Costello makes me nervous. I can't, I don't know. I really can't go he anywhere. He has that effect on everyone. You weren't in Orlando with him. He makes us <laughs> way nervous. No. <laughs> well, we cut him off today, right? He just wasn't allowed to talk to the bartender, so but it escalated. Anyway, so our, our first one is called New Moolah, and really what New Moolah is, like, it, it's a kid's savings app. Is it like N-E-W-M-O-O? N-U-M-O-O-L-A. So of, it's, it's, of course. It's the only Obviously. one that's more confusing to spell than Bloom. 
<laughs> that's kind of that's that's the the key takeaway. Ooh, Bloom, Bloom has three O's. Yeah. So I mean, I'm gonna throw you under the bus every chance I get. I mean, you knew that getting into it. Um, so what New Mola is is kid savings app. Um, and really, it's it's kind of the perfect it's the perfect gift gift for that friend or family member that has just always been absolutely horrible with finances, but they're too far gone, right? So think about that friend that they're just they're past the ability to kind of get back on the right track, but they've just had a kid. So how are, how are we going to make sure that this financial illiteracy is not genetic and doesn't get passed <laughs> on to, uh, the next, to the next generation? Just in case uh, somebody like Doug uh, procreates. Uh, you, you said it. I didn't. I'm going to stay out. Th- I mean, I'm literally Sorry. in the middle. Over here, minding my own business. can't hear it, but. Oh, oh, you can, oh yeah. That's how that works, apparently. They can hear you. Um, so that's, that's really what it is. If you've got a friend, they're so far gone, you've given up on them, but you haven't quite given up on their kid yet, Help the New Moolah is a great opportunity. For just, just very briefly, what happens? People, a child can automatically save, or, so or what does think it do? About, think about everything you've been doing on the, uh, on the refrigerator at home, right? You've got gold stars for your kids when they're finishing their chores. You've got X, Y, and Z when they do certain things for them. Think about putting all that into an app that also has education in it. So in oh. a in addition to all those pieces, you're also learning how to deal with real money. Awesome. And it's actually movement of real money. It's not, you know, anything yeah. fake or any kind of just, you know, gold star. It's actually you get dollars. Wow, so that's it cool. it really trains the kid in the early ages. Who else do we got gifts for here, Zach? We've got a lot. So uh, six of them total. One of the more exciting ones. We all have an uncle or, uh, you know, somebody that's just one step removed, and they've got that hobby, right? We're never quite sure what they're doing in the third floor in the basement of their mom's hey easy. That's, hey that's a slippery slope. We'll, we'll, we'll we are podcasting. We'll stay away Hello. That. You know, your your hunk, your uncle who's a woodworker, you're not quite sure what he does all the time, but he just starts this Etsy apparently. shop that just goes out of left field. He makes seventy grand a year on this Etsy shop. But turns out you need to pay taxes on that Etsy shop and he has not been thinking about it at all. And coming back to the earlier conversation you just had with your mom, this is pretty pertinent too. Um so track.tax is a company from San Francisco that and this is gonna get into a whole lot of buzzwords, but through machine learning basically helps you figure out what your W two income is from home or from work I should say and what your ten ninety nine uh, income is from whatever the thing is, you know, the woodworking thing you're doing in the down in the basement, and then make sure that you're actually withholding those taxes, and then in an automated fashion. So does this make Joe's mom's business legitimate then? Well, it, there is no money laundering component, so I think that's uh, going to be that's going to be tough. I would be closer to legitimate. She's not going to be an early adopter of this technology. Then. I would not call. Well, I mean, she could be an early adopter. She's going to just going to need some layers in between her and Track.Tech. I love how we have to have conversations like this in Kansas. We can't have this in the basement like no. these conversations. No, but it sounds it actually sounds really good. So you're saying that the W the W two you did just based on what you're your 1099 income might be so you're not you're not hit with that big surprise at the end exactly yeah so that's what it is i mean last last year's personally i spent the whole year contracting and at the end of the year i had a ten thousand dollar tax bill that i had to scramble for and i had no idea how i was gonna i mean it made it happen right brother yeah speaking of what you i said you didn't do your taxes right you forgot a deduction that is (laughs) (laughs) i think we need to get joe's all money gosh I love how everybody out there is like, I have no idea, but we're having like this nerd talk right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. We're having a great time. We're cracking ourselves up. This is like a this is like a holiday party when I was a financial planner. <laughs> like us in that and then I took my W two and my ten ninety nine and oh, ah, so ah. <laughs> it was so great. And my wife's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> right. It's a beautiful marriage, isn't Un- it? Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, we are we are running so late, Zach. I got time for actually one more. Okay, sounds good. No worries. So I think at the end of the day, probably the next most exciting one is Saver. And what Saver is, this is the company from Australia. So number one, they moved to Kansas City. Number two, the exciting part is really what they are is kind of similar to Acorns-ish. They're a roundup app. So you know that friend that's never actually going to do anything in their own best interest? No matter what you tell them, they're always going to take the other direction. This is the perfect app for them. You may even have to sneak in and put it on Doug's phone. I mean, your friend's phone. Um, <laughs> So that they say every time they swipe their debit card, they're saving up a little bit. So the way that we talk about this at the bank is really like the Trojan horse of personal financial management. And we don't mean that in like a, you know, Bad financial way, right. protection kind yes. of way. Yeah, that we're not taking any brands there and it kind of extrapolating. Do you need a minute, Chris? Are you good? Um, uh, we're, we're more so talking about kind of 
tricking your friend into saving, trying to convince them to save without them knowing what's happening. So, yeah, we'll, we'll let him his brain go. I love that, though, went. Zach, because we've seen that opt. I mean, to get serious for a second, we've yeah. seen the whole opt out thing really works versus opt in. You know what I mean? You tell people you have to save into your 401k. Sure, a bunch of them end up taking it out. But there's a bunch of other people, what roughly half, where the money stays in where the money wouldn't have stayed in. There's something magical about taking people's brains out of it. Yeah. Zach, yeah. a big question. So of the companies you've talked about, are any of these apps like available today to download? Are they live yet? So out of the ones that I've talked about today, um, the one with your uncle who has an Etsy shop is totally available. So track.tax is the one that is up and available. Otherwise, they will all be available within basically the next 90 days. Track.tax. Yep. New Moolah yep. for kids yep. and Saver. Indeed. That's awesome. Zach Pettit, thanks for hanging out with us for a minute. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Thank Great you. job. Oh, wait. Uh, hey, uh, we got a bunch to go before that, man. <clears throat> you already have a bingo? What? Holy oh. cow. What? We work? got two bingos. What? Michelle. We, we're not even halfway through the show and they got bingos. Okay, talk to me afterwards because we got some stuff for you. Claire. Uh, well, <laughs> as, you, as, you saw, as you saw with Randy earlier, Doug's got some great kissing. It, it does involve cocktails with me. <laughs> it is, it is fan, fantastic. Yeah, I like how we give people stuff and they're like, how disappointing will it be? <laughs> Thanks. You're clearly not here for the swag. No, that's here right. for the content. That's Thanks right. for the post-it notes. <laughs> yeah, right, right. All right, uh, and I think our takeaway there, guys. I mean, we 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 have all of these these devices. You know, somebody said to me recently. They said, "What if what if you told us when we were young that we would have this device that you could hold on your hand in your hand? All the secrets of the world were there, and we use it to watch cat videos." Yes. Right. Right. It's so true when, when, listen to what Zach said. I mean, there's so many ways to automate your savings, so much cool stuff on your phone. I think the biggest thing he said was to take your brain out of it. If you can make it so that you don't have to think about it, you do it one time, automate it, be done with it. Yeah, I total, totally agree. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's shocking. You've, ta you. you've taken your brain out of it a long time ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seven years ago. <laughs> he checked out of this when we hit the stage. Right. right. Uh, everybody ready for our featured guest? Hooray! If you're in the room, you saw him a little bit earlier. He grills other people on his hit new podcast, Rounding the Bases, but we get to grill him ourselves, the man who does the pregame shows and the postgame shows for the Kansas City Royals. He also has this new hot podcast called Rounding the Bases with Joel Goldberg. Guess who? Joel Goldberg! <laughs> We gotta. Joel does not know how to speak without a water cooler being poured over his head by Salvi. <laughs> Figured today we could just step outside. <laughs> how cool was that? On your Twitter, what, what, what Chris is referring to is on your Twitter feed, you've got, you, you got two of the Kansas City Royals players kind of holding you, and they're, w w when, when you guys were just rocking, I won't talk about the Royals or the Tigers this year. We'll leave that alone. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, but, 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 but they're poor. We beat you guys more than you beat us this year. Okay, moving on. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> little salt uh but, but but you're but but they're taking the water cooler and they're pouring it over your head how cool is that it's cold <laughs> no you know this thing started and I, and I don't even know when or how but the the weird thing in baseball this isn't just a royals thing uh but chris knows it's it's something that has a name in kansas city they call it the salvi splash salvador perez their star catcher big personality and and he likes to be the one to dump the Gatorade bucket on whoever the guest, the star of the game is, and I'm interviewing the star of the game. At some point, players in this era decided that it would be fun to dump Gatorade and water and throw things at each other and punch each other. Like, what happened to just a high five? But what, what's amazing is, like, each time it happens, it's, it, the amazing thing is, like, they act like they're surprised when it happens. Yeah, this has been a whole routine, too, because what happened, Salvador Perez, for those that, that aren't, um, familiar with the Kansas City Royals that are listening is 
you know, 6'4", 200, whatever, 50, 40 pounds. He's a big dude. He'd be offended by that, Mike, but go ahead. He, yeah, right. <laughs> and and he, he loves to do this. Like, he's just a fun guy that, that wants to celebrate. And, and he will see me make eye contact with him when I'm doing this post-game interview. And now he'll, he'll like, start signaling to me, no, turn him this way, no, turn him this way. And I'll be like, dude, do you, you want to direct the broadcast, too? Like, what's going on here? But, you know, the, the, the greater message is this. Um, however silly or cool or fun or not fun it is, it's part of their culture. Like, I talk a lot in my speeches and in my podcast about culture. This is how these players celebrate. More importantly, it's how their fans celebrate. And so fans stay in the stands to watch that Gatorade bucket. And, and nine times out of ten, I'm not the target. But I also oftentimes am more familiar to him than, say, the young guy that just came up. I've been here a long time. And sometimes it's just fun to say, you know what, let's get Joel. And when you got a dude that's six foot four that's saying it's your turn, you, it, it's a bad look when you're trying to get out of it. But it's also fun for everyone. So I'm not – if I could avoid it, I would prefer to. But if they want to dump this bucket on me – I mean, one year they serenaded me on my birthday – live television and and i'm sitting there thinking i'm just this old dude that's that's trying to do an interview and and they're singing happy birthday to me like how surreal is this so uh, that, yeah have fun you know uh, well how did you first get into broadcasting and into the, the uh the organization with the royals well i i've been in broadcasting 24 years and it's what i dreamed of growing up and people will say to me well how you know how great of a baseball player even like i'm sorry but even much? at like five and ten years old you want to be a broadcaster five i don't remember ten for sure i did and I don't know at what point, if it was 10, 11 years old, where I realized I'm not really good at sports. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm okay, but I'm, I'm average. Like, I, I wasn't going to get any scholarship. I wasn't going to do that. But I was the kid at eight, nine years old. I can rem- It had to have been second grade because I remember the specific teacher saying to my parents, can you get him to stop coming into school every day telling us everything that happened the night before? So there was an element of wanting to talk and wanting to just tell stories. And you know, in one of my podcast, recent podcasts, I interviewed a guy named Pat Williams. And he was, for people that, that um, know, I don't even watch a lot of basketball anymore, but for people that have watched basketball, and these are iconic names, he was the one that drafted Charles Barkley with the 76ers and Shaquille O'Neal with the Orlando Magic. And I was connected with him. But the funny part about it was, I remember I grew up outside of Philadelphia before moving to Chicago, that I just remember, you know, like when you're a kid, you have these little images in your head. I remember him coaching third base at least once in my little league. Like he had a kid that played against me. And we, we talked about this, and it added up. Like the timeline added up. And he said this quote to me, or the soundbite to me, in a recent podcast that resonated. He said... The world, is, the world is not made of atoms, Joel. The world is made of stories. And that resonated with me because we all have stories to tell. And it doesn't matter if it's the last guy on the roster, the first guy on the roster, whether it's the entrepreneur, whether it's the big-time, you, know, uh, uh, you know, multi-billion dollar CEO. We all have a story to tell. That's my passion. That's what I love doing, and, and, and that's what I've always done. We found that on the podcast, actually. The more over the years that we've, we, people tell their stories about money, that's what resonates. When we first started, we had facts and figures and a lot of the math. The math isn't what resonates when it comes to money. It's the personal story. Well, that, the, the numbers will fill in the blanks, right? And I, I don't know. I mean, you guys have done this a long time, but it, it's great when you interview the superstars, but it's more rewarding when you interview the story that no one's heard. Yeah. You know, it just, it's like, wow, you know, this is, people may not know about you, but it's really cool. But even the superstars started somewhere. Everybody has a story. Yeah. yeah like, for instance, there, um, so up until last year, one of the big superstars here in Kansas City was Eric Hosmer. He left in free agency and went to San Diego. I was very close with him. And we were talking one day, his... Um, Dad was a firefighter in Miami, uh, originally from New York. His mom grew up in Cuba, uh, defected, great family. And I, I was, so the Royals had a player named Kendris Morales, who was a teammate of Hosmer's, and, and, and he was their designated hitter, and he was from Cuba. I uh, didn't speak a lot of English, but really good guy, really productive. And I remember saying to Hosmer one day, not knowing that there was a story there, I said, man, how, how good is, you know, Morales, just the way he goes about his business? And he goes, I've been watching him since I was a kid. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, my grandfather was Cuban. 
and I used to go over to his house when he defected to Miami. I used to go over to his house on Sundays as a kid, and he would make me watch Cuban baseball games on TV. And, and I watched the teenage version of Kendrick Morales, and I'm like, no one knows that story. Like, the, how cool is this? And I'm now going to go on television and tell this story. And it was like, it really was like a goosebumps moment because you can't say, hey, give me a story. You got to, and this is something I talk about all the time. It's, it's common sense. And shoot me, I, I'm guilty of this too. When, when you hear me on a post-game show say, how does it feel? Oh, my gosh, the worst question ever, right? Um, we just won on a huge game. It feels terrible. I mean, like, Great. What do you, you know? It feels but, awesome. Yeah, awesome. But it is like the how, what, why, when, where questions that sometimes we forget to ask beyond how does it feel. There's a story out there to tell. Well, and people think that this doesn't have anything to do with your nine to five, but it but it really does. It I totally mean, even does. in business, when you're working with other people, storytelling and being being uh, uh, sharing these interpersonal relationships you have makes doing business so much better. And it doesn't mean that we all have to be friends. I don't need to know your story, and then we have to go hang out every single day. But if I know something. And it doesn't have to be a deep, dark secret either. But if I know a little something more about you. But if it is a deep, dark secret. Even better. Yeah. Better story. But there just is a deeper connection when you have that, right? I mean, like, I don't consider myself with any of the Royals players. I don't consider them, any of them, my close friends. But I feel like I have a bond with them that allows me to work closer with them. And this is true in any workplace. Once you build that trust, you can accomplish so much more. It, whether it's uh, whether it's employer employee relationship, whether it's with clients, whatever it is, uh, once you build that trust, the the walls are down. You can do anything. All right, you ask people on your on your show, rounding the bases, a bunch of questions for using baseball analogies. Has anybody ever asked you those questions? Asked you those questions that you ask everybody else? Mm, no. Fantastic, Doug. Doug Doug did it earlier, <laughs> just because he's got the voice. Yeah, we can't we can't share that part of the conversation. No, we'll leave that alone. Go do the clean version. Can I get my shirt back later. <laughs> we, we uh, so let me ask you these: your first big hit. Everybody's got this first successful story in business that they had. What was yours? So mine, I, I think the first big hit would be just breaking into broadcasting. As I mentioned before, it was my dream to be a broadcaster, and and I, you know. When I was a kid, there, wasn't, there weren't pre- and post-game television shows for sports, so it's not like it, it was crystal clear what it was going to be. I just knew that I wanted to be on TV talking about it. But when I got out of college, I went to the University of Wisconsin, um, and I graduated, and I wanted to be on TV. I'd taken all the classes, and I started applying. And, and of course, at that point, Internet's just starting. So I, I had, like, some service, like some phone service that you'd call in, a hotline that you paid 20 bucks a month for, and it would list all the job op- opportunities in the country. There, there was nothing else. I mean, it's not like you were browsing the internet, right? What are you doing then? Writing them down as fast as you can and yeah, call or, them back? Yeah, or redial. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't each time you called, but I, I think I was paying like a big 20 bucks out of my pocket for this darn service. And so I just remember applying to a job and getting rejected in Missoula, Montana. I'm a Chicago kid, uh, well, you know, went to high school in Chicago. I'm back home uh, in my mom's basement, and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 I get, and I get rejected. And I'm thinking in my head, if I can't get a job in Montana, where am I going to get a job? And no offense to anybody in Montana, but I'm like a big city kid thinking I'm cooler than this and that. And, and my aha moment and the big hit was that I, and I am not a cold calling type, but I think that if you have a passion for something, you overcome whatever your fears are. This was my passion, it was my dream, and I started making phone calls to small markets, and I would have this line every single time. And again, remember, no internet. So I would call up a TV station, hi, um, can you tell me who your news director is? Yeah, it's Joe Smith. Okay, thanks, bye. Click. 10 minutes later, call. Hi, can I speak with Joe Smith, please? <laughs> In a completely different voice. In a completely yeah, right. And, and, and then it'll be, um, I just happen to be passing through Terre Haute, Indiana next week. I just happen to be passing through Binghamton, New York next week. And I hopped in my car. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. And I hopped in my car, and I had the one suit coat I had, and I'd change at the Mc- local McDonald's or whatever, and I'd, you know, they would say to me anything from, um, yeah, come on by, or, well, I don't know if I'll be here or not. And at the bare minimum, I stopped by and dropped off a resume tape. 
and if I was really lucky, I would sit there and meet with people for an hour, and I'd follow up, and I'd make phone calls two hours later, and I'd send thank you notes, all the old school things that you know, nobody really needs to do anymore with email and social media. And suddenly, this guy that had no chance of getting a job, and I was terrible. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, suddenly, I was getting offers all over the place. And they weren't great. I mean, you know, my first TV job was $13,500 a year, okay? I made no money in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. But I was in. And it was that determination and, and, and overcoming that fear that was that first hit. I love that. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Yep. Get out there. Second, your biggest home run you've hit so far. Okay. The biggest home run, and this one was life-changing for me. So before I came to Kansas City in 08, I worked. 10 years in St. Louis, the last three traveling with the St. Louis Cardinals. But I was also covering local news before that. And so I can remember in 2001 interviewing a young player that hadn't been in the big leagues yet at spring training by the name of Albert Pujols. We knew that he might be something. We didn't know that he was quickly going to become the greatest player on the planet and one of the greatest players ever. I did not understand how to connect with superstars. And I think that there, I talk about this in my speeches to businesses a lot, but there, it can be intimidating to try to do business with the, the big time company or the big time CEO or, or someone that you just, you look up to. And I think sometimes we all forget that they're human beings like us. They happen to be living in incredible circumstances. So Albert Pujols was being pulled in a lot of directions and quite frankly, no after no after no. And it's not like he never talked to me, but it was hard for me to get an interview. I wasn't a huge fan of his. And 2007, I remember thinking, I'm going to Kansas City. I think I have this job here. And I said to him, Albert, can I ask you something? I, I need to talk to you about something personal. It's private, and I don't need a TV camera. It's not an interview. He said, sure, no problem. So he went into the batting cage in, in Houston at Minute Maid Park or whatever it was called back then, Enron, probably, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, right. remember Enron? And I said to him, I said, Albert, I, I know that you, you know, after growing up in the Dominican, I know that you went to high school and junior college in Kansas City. I have this opportunity. I, I hope you won't tell anyone because no one knows this yet. There was a vulnerability aspect to it. But I'm wondering what you think of Kansas City. You have kids. I have kids. I want to know what your opinion is of this town. And he said to me, it's a great place to raise a family. He said to me, um, you know, I can't tell you about the job, but I know you'd love living there, and I won't tell anyone. And from that day forward, I think two weeks later, he invited me out to lunch. And, here, and at this point, he, he had surpassed Barry Bonds as the best player in the world. This is 2007. And I remember being out to lunch with him in Milwaukee in the back of a Puerto Rican grocery store that had a little restaurant in the back in some little residential neighborhood in, in the city. And I'm sitting there talking about life with the greatest player on the planet with a guy that I thought I had no connection with. And it was like, this, I didn't need to talk baseball with him. I just needed to connect with him. And by the way, the, the kicker to the story, and that, so that was my home run to change the way I, I, I talked with superstars, was that he then asked if I wanted to buy his house in Kansas City. <laughs> sure. Don't you guys talk about like... Um, like 70-year mortgages? Yeah. yeah. Right. I said, Albert, um, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but you and I don't make the same amount of money. He said, well, it's only 5,000 square feet. And I said, um, no. He said, you could rent it if you want, which I probably, I know renting's probably not a good idea, but I, I could have got a, a really good deal. Anyway, it all worked out. Let me think about it. That's what you should have said. Let me think about yeah, it. Yeah, let me talk to my wife. But, you know, yeah. the, the, the kicker to it is that, um, and, and he ended up doing a testimonial for my website, on my speaking business website, and, and so he gave me this really great quote, but I'd said to him, I got, I got to con this was last year, I got to confess something to you, or 2017, uh, he was in Kansas City for, for a game with the Angels, and I said, I, you used to scare the heck out of me, and he said, you know, um, I get pulled in a lot of directions, I don't trust people, and so it told me that, you know, once you build that trust, you can, you can go anywhere with someone. I love that story. Uh, you ask people about a swing and a miss, and I, I was listening to your show. It's hard for people to answer that question. Well, you know, I, was tr I tried too hard, right? Uh, w what was your real big swing and miss? I guess I could say Pujols was a swing and miss, you know, the, the, way, the way that went. Um, I think 
I mean, there have been swings and misses all along the way, and there were so many moments where I was focused on what the next job was, and then I didn't get that job, and it's what am I doing wrong, and all this kind of stuff. I think that, that to me, and, and, and maybe there's a message here, the biggest swing and miss to me was being sort of stuck in my own box. And, you know, we hear, we hear about, you know, being in a silo. Well, I was a broadcaster, and I love what I do. I, 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 I'm living my dream. But I never thought outside of that box. And when I decided a couple years ago to start speaking to companies, and then this podcast was a result of that, it was like, man, I, I've been missing the boat for a really long time. Like, I was so focused. In, because when I came to Kansas City, I gave up the, and you guys talk about this, I've heard it on your podcast, but I gave up the comfortable salary job, the benefits and all that. Hey, yes, if you want to go to Kansas City, that's great, but you're going to be a freelance and you're going to have to pay for your own benefits. You're only going to have to work six months a year. And you're going to get a year's worth of salary in six months, and then you're off on your own. Well, my swing and miss was the fact that I thought that those other six months were, let's try to go find some other games to broadcast, and there wasn't a whole lot out there, and I didn't realize and didn't think, wait a minute, maybe I could do some other things. Maybe I could take the skills that I have uh, of getting in front of people, of entertaining people, um, of, of making people think and challenging people, and I could do that in a different way. So maybe it's a swing and a miss turned into a positive because I feel like for eight years here, I sort of missed that boat and never even thought of it, and suddenly the light bulb went on, and it's like, man, I'm still doing what I love, and now I found something else that I love, and, and I'm just getting started. So it's, you know... I, but, I, I mean, I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. So, um, you know, I'm the guy that if you want to, I tell my friends all the time, if you want to text me and complain about how poorly the team is doing, I'm not your guy. I'm, I'm going to find a silver lining in something. I'm surprised to hear that you enjoy your job because you don't seem passionate at all to me about what you, about, about what you do. You know, I do tell people all the time, like, <laughs> somebody pays me to go to a baseball game every day. I know. It's, you've got to pinch good. yourself sometimes. Yeah, I, I love it. That's, let's talk about rounding the bases because I love the show. And uh, obviously, that's one of the reasons we wanted to have you on, but just to highlight how awesome the show's been. But, but, but tell everybody that hasn't heard the show yet what you do on rounding the bases. So, you know, it, it really started a little over a year ago, and I'll, I'll begin to expand it. I mean, I really wanted to interview CEOs, leaders, and it doesn't, it could be a startup to the biggest company. I mean, I've, I've had Cliff Pemble, the CEO of Garmin, that's a big deal, um, to, again, the, the startup entrepreneurs that maybe no one's heard of, but they have a great story to tell. And, and I just thought, and sometimes there's some sports talk, but to me, sports talk was too easy. I can go do, and I do sports talk every single day, but how can I take, you know, I mentioned in, in my podcast earlier, how can I take the lessons of baseball, the everyday life, the successes and failures, and tell other people's stories through, through those lenses? And, and there's some unbelievable stories out there. I mean, I interviewed a guy named Drew Meyerwich, who was, I think, my third podcast um, Back last, late, you know, last 2017, he was a uh, colonel in the army, and, um, and, and he led troops in, in Afghanistan and in um, Somalia, Black Hawk Down, you think about that, and he lost, you know, he lost troops that, that were under his watch, and now he is the COO of um, a manufacturing plant here in Kansas City, they make nameplates, things like that, and he thinks that there's more pressure in leading a company and their employees than the pressure of losing servicemen and women in combat, which to me I can't relate to, but his point was that I, I, they all knew that their lives could be in danger and we all knew that their families, tragedy or not, would be taken care of forever. But if we as a company fail our employees, they're not gonna have food on the table. So it just, to me, lessons like that, and I just um, recently had a podcast. I had the privilege of going, so I, I had missed, before September, I had missed one game in 11 years for a funeral. So I left for six games in September, and I had the greatest honor of my career of leaving the Royals for six days and going over 9-11 on a USO tour with former Royals, including Hall of Famer George Brett, to Kuwait. And we are doing a live broadcast with 200 servicemen and women from Kansas City on September 11th, what was September 12th over there. How incredible is that? The, and and to, to just feel that synergy, but also, and, and I'll leave you with this one, because I, you know, I could go on forever. Um, we were the third, so that was the first base we were at. But the third base we were at that we visited 
which we weren't allowed to even say what the location was. It was that secret. And, and, and we're asked, this was an Air Force base, and we're asking the commander, like, what, what are those planes taking off for? Well, they're, you know, they're going over on missions right now to Syria to bomb specific targets. And it's like, this is real. Well, they explained to us that there were, or there are like 12 planes, fighter jets on site, 20 pilots, and 1,200 people on the base to make that all work. So when you talk about companies, when you talk about leadership, when you talk about, I'm a firm believer that everyone matters. I see it in baseball. The Royals, when they won the World Series in 2015, the guy that had the game-winning RBI in the final game of the World Series, their first world championship in 30 years, it was the only at-bat he had the whole playoffs. He was the last guy. Everyone matters. If, if those guys on that base don't have the air conditioning work, working right, and those guys aren't sleeping right, and they're uncomfortable, and the food's not right, and they got to go up on a plane in a life and death mission. So it, it's so, it's, to me, it's just so incredible to be able to see these stories. I was so glad that uh, you were able to make it tonight. So glad you were part of the show. Joe Goldberg, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thanks a ton, man. I've never right. been a uh, uh, while we get ready for the trivia, we need our trivia contestants to head over by Carrie and Doug. But while we're waiting on that, I want to ask, because I found this out before the show, I've, I want to ask how far people came from. I know some people were coming from Iowa. Some people here from Iowa. Nice. We got our Iowans here. Nice, nice. Uh, uh, and I'm going to get to the special story here in just a second. Where else are people from besides Kansas City? Oklahoma, nice. Thanks for coming all the way from Oklahoma. Uh, where else? We have a gentleman here, Jay. Jay came all the way from Oregon to see the show. Wow. That is, thank you so much. Is it, isn't that cool, OG? It's amazing. That <laughs> is. So Overland Park and like the. Uh, Overland Park? I was say Texas. Not, I came from Texas. Yes. Yes. Thanks so much, Jay. Thanks to everybody, by the way, for coming out. I'm so happy that any we, we just anybody listening to the show is incredible. Okay, contestants, you guys ready? Yeah. All right, Richie, let's roll the trivia, man. Hey there, trivia fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and today I'm going to rock your world with some amazing Kansas City-based trivia. You know, I'm a pretty big deal here in Kansas City. You know, I was just out talking to a guy in the beautiful outdoor mall you have here in the pouring rain, and it turns out Kansas City isn't just the city of fountains. It's the city of fountain drinks. Seriously, you can get a fountain drink anywhere in this town. There's these exclusive restaurants like Subway and a place owned by this woman named Wendy and even that highfalutin white tablecloth joint, Ruby Tuesday. Oh, you can drink every day, all the time. This town is amazing. But let's not focus on that. Let's talk about those other, much less exciting fountains in Kansas City. How many publicly operated fountains are there in Kansas City? Come on, you all live here. It's like a layup for you people. You ought to know the exact right. number. I think that's got to be like the cost of admission is you got you to gotta know. Well, let's see who does know, see who we have. We'll go ladies first. Doug, if we want to meet our contestants, who do we have here? I'm Mary. I'm from Iowa and know nothing about Kansas City. <laughs> She's like, oh, she the crap. best chance. Yes, and it's Mary? Awesome. And, and, and how did you hear about this thing? Did you get dragged here? Uh, yeah, my friend Jen. Nice. Way to go, Jen. Good work. And uh, next to you? Yeah, I'm Dave. I live over uh, in Leavenworth County, Kansas. So Awesome. Leavenworth County, pretty close. Yeah. You can tell Did I'm from they here. they let you out on furlough for this? He's got that, uh, Dave, right? It's Dave. So Dave's got the ankle bracelet on tonight. Yeah. And then next to you. I'm Paul. I've lived here for about six months, and I have not studied the Kansas City area very much. Oh, man. You picked the three worst possible people you could have picked for this. Have you heard the show? My God. Yeah, this is great. This is fantastic. All right, so, so, so we've got Mary, Dave, and Paul, right? All right, uh, Mary, we're going to go ladies first, and if you've ever listened to the show, you know that doesn't mean you go first, because we play Price is Right style, which means it's the closest without going over, all right? So do you want to pick first, second, or last? It's, Mary, it's not Mary's first rodeo. Mary said she's going last for everybody at home. And then uh, Dave, middle or first? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul, that means you got the bullseye. (laughs) Paul, do you want to go first or first? (laughs) (laughs) All right. So the question again, how many publicly operated fountains are there in Kansas City? I'm going to go 700. 700 with Paul. That is a horrible guess. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go 14. (laughs) Taking, oh, Mary, you've got a wide berth there. Uh, 14 or 700. Worst we've ever done. Save it, Mary, save it. Well, the obvious choices are 15 or 701. (laughs) (laughs) Right. You're throwing one of these two guys under the bus. (laughs) We're going to go 701. 701. 701. All right. So we've got 701 for Mary. I had really high We've got Mary. 700 for Dave. Or did, did, did Dave say yeah. Paul had 700? And then 14? 14. 14. 14. All right. You guys ready for the answer? No. We're going to make you wait for the answer just like they do on network TV, because we have our very special segment. We told you earlier about TIA and their difference makers. We're going to talk to one. You guys can go sit down here for a second because... Think about what you've done. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so happy to introduce one of TIA's difference makers here in Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome from Children First. Let's say hello to Kathleen Webb. How are you? Great, thank you? I'm so happy I get to talk to you because you, as, as you and I talked a few days ago and I got to hear your story, I thought this is a story more people need to hear. Thank you. So, so, but let's slow play it a little bit. Let's talk about you and your community. When did you first think about even becoming a difference maker in your community? Well, I'm a person of faith. So when I was at church one day, I heard the story of a a young woman who lived right across the street, and she recently became a widow. And she had six children under the age of 16. And the police had come across and said, you know, you've got to help this woman because this family is going to starve if you don't do something. And I, I didn't do anything. You know, I went home. But two weeks later, this is still mulling around in my mind. Like, someone should do something. And I thought, well, I could do something. And so I met her. And? So, so you met her. So you go across the street. <laughs> right. and, and, and what's... I mean, I can't imagine two weeks later, she gets a knock on her door. She meets you. What did you say? Right. Hi. <laughs> you know. Well, someone introduced me from the church. Okay. And, you know, the police were right. Um, the van, the transmission was gone from the van. Uh, the house was not in her name. So she was like a ghost. And um, she, was cat- gonna, she was going to lose the house. Then. She, she was going to lose the house. Yeah. Right, right. And the, the cupboards were truly bare. In fact, the cupboard doors were falling down. And the children were so kind, but they were very hungry. So what did you do? I went to work, <laughs> and I just started making phone calls. And sometimes I'd come home to my husband, and I would just weep. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't a social worker. You know, I would just send out my prayers. But, you know, a couple of days later, the phone would ring, and someone would say, you know, I-, I can help. I can help fix this van, or I can tell you what to do about the house. And things happened. It took over a year to get that family stable. Wow. And how did you, how did you end up get, getting them stable? You know, just through working with different people, going, you know, telling her to go see the lender and find out what's going on there. And oh, so you were like her advisor. I mean, you're going place to place advising her on what to do. Right. And people were telling me, helping me figure that out. Yeah. And so when that year was done, I was like, I need to hire a social worker. Yeah. Right. You know, someone that knows the resources. And I decided to take action because by then I was used to making the phone calls, you know, doing the work. And so I wrote a grant and I won. I won enough money to hire a part-time social worker. Now, I'm still trying to raise the other part to her salary, but she's in that neighborhood. And we got to learn about food insecurity and what was going on in that neighborhood. Not just a social worker for her, but for everybody in that neighborhood. That neighborhood, right. Right. How awesome is this? Just somebody who decides to just step up said, maybe me. Isn't that cool? Thank you. I mean, that, it, it just, it, 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 it was so amazing. So then Children First was kind of born out of that. 
Right. Um, we had heard that this nonprofit uh, was dormant and wasn't doing anything, and they had their golden ticket with the IRS, right? They, they had that piece of paper that, 501 said, C3. that yeah. said, I qualified to take donations, I qualify to win grants, you know, and so we went to that leadership and said, hey, you know, will you transfer this organization to us? Pretty cool, right? Because <laughs> I bypassed, at that time, the IRS only had this long form, bypassed all of that, and we had our golden ticket. That's fantastic. And so today, tell everybody what you do today. So with the social worker, when we learned about the hunger in the community, we found a lot and we made an education garden. Because if a child comes up to you and says, I'm hungry, you say, look, here's a sack of food. And you've fixed the problem for four hours, right? But you haven't addressed, you know, why are you hungry? Why doesn't your family have the food? If we can teach that st- um, if we can teach that student how to grow the food, wow, that's, that's a game changer in a family, right? Because we can grow our tomatoes and our food. That's, that's so exciting. The, uh, talk about the kids doing this stuff. How excited are they? Oh, they are so excited. We, we uh, have it during recess, and we have volunteers in the garden. And so, you know, do I play soccer or do I plant green beans? You know, and they come and they learn and they are so excited about this food. This when we had a when we had the garden open house, there was like starter seed potatoes, and this kid came up and said, "Can I eat this?" It was like I'm so hungry, I want to eat this now. Mm. And you're like, "Well, let's let's plant it first. <laughs> you know, let's harvest some more." So they're very excited about the food. And it's a game changer. But even this idea of learning to grow things, right? This delayed gratification has got to be exciting. It's very, it's very exciting. Yeah. So then TIA has their Difference Maker program, and you find out that you won. <laughs> Tell me about that. Oh, wahoo, folks. <laughs> oh, my God, $10,000? Oh, my goodness. And I'm here, what, 10 minutes? So I'm making about 1000 a minute, right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know? what, what, what is that? But, but that is a game changer for you, though. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're a neighborhood organization, and we started just because of this widow. I mean, this is going to be huge for us to be able to have this money. Thank you. Thank you, TIA. Yeah, tell, well, and, and you know TIA uh, fairly well. Well, my husband, we, my husband, we got married 10 years ago. Hey. I talked him into marrying me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that story, but that's a different day. Yeah. Anyway, so when he worked at the university, he is financial planning there. And so every, every month I see the logo. So wahoo. That's, that's, so you see TIA every day and then, every you, day, and then right. you win. Right. Well, well, thank you very much for telling your story. Thanks to TIA for helping us uh, get the word out about different ma- difference makers like you, Kathleen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Everybody, thank Kathleen you. Webb. Thank you very much. Woo! Thank you so much. And by the way, if you want to take the difference maker quiz yourself, Uh, You can go to quiz.tia.org and find out if you're a giver, you're a believer. You can check out everything. The 100 Difference Makers, $10,000 each around the nation. A million dollars TIA is given away. Give it up for TIA. Nice job. Thank you very much, Cannon Company. Yeah, I love that you guys are doing that. That's great. Uh, Speaking of great... We got a great second half to this trivia. So trivia people, let's get back in the area. And we got to review this again. So um, we started off with... We had Peter, Paul, and Mary. (laughs) That's exactly what I was thinking. That's who we had. I really did think about that. They're about to... Dave and Paul and Mary. Dave. Every season there is, whatever. Yes. Yes. Mary from Iowa. So she doesn't know a lot about this. Dave with the ankle bracelet. And, uh, Ooh. yeah. Paul, who's been here for 15 minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Perfect. So, Paul got them all started, really set the bar appropriately at 700 fountains. Dave, he went, took the other road. He went down to 14. Okay. And Mary at 701. She used a lot of logic. She used all of the brain power she could summon, and she came up with 701. All right, we ready to do this? All right. It's Carrie's whoa, whoa. turn. Hey, I'll, I'll take it from here. All right, but Carrie's got it. Richie, uh, let's do this. Hey there, trivia fans. I'm the much better and definitely more accomplished announcer, Carrie Olson, back with your trivia answer. 
While Doug was talking about getting fountain drinks from fast food restaurants, we all know that here in Kansas City, we have more fountains than any place but Rome. And, and no, Doug, not Rome, Ohio. But did you know this? Did you know that our own Swope Park is more than two times the size of Central Park in New York City? Or that the Country Club Plaza, opened in 1922, was the country's first suburban shopping district. Woo! Awesome trivia. Okay, so while those are great, I know what you're all waiting for. How many publicly operated fountains are there in Kansas City? While there are estimates of over 200 fountains in the city as a whole, the city operates an amazing 48 of them. <laughs> So Just a out bit there. outside. <laughs> oh, drinking fountains! Yes. It's an important. Well, if you got it right, which none of our trivia contestants did. In that case, another another uh, one under protest. Yes. Exactly. Another we get an asterisk, but I think that means no. That that, that thing means Dave gets it right. Yeah. Dave is yeah. our winner. <laughs> and Dave. I don't know if you know this. We didn't, we didn't tell Dave what he wins. Nope. Dave gets a photo with OG and I suitable for framing <laughs> using your phone. You got a phone? Yeah, I could use that to replace my family photo at home now. <laughs> Perfect. Very Is that the family photo? Fa- <laughs> Is that the family photo, the fake family photo from the Hallmark store? No, we got rid of that a couple years ago, and we actually had to put an actual family photo. Oh, creative. Nice. Not denying the relatives anymore. Yeah, come on up, Dave. And actually, Chris, do you want to take the picture? Yeah, we'll have Chris take the picture, if you don't mind. All right. We got, what are you doing? I'm part of the family. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Just in the middle. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice job, man. Congratulations. All right, we got it. Perfect picture. Got Dave right on. Suitable for framing. <laughs> it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for the Bloom Call for Help. And normally here, I extol, extol the virtues of Bloom. But come on, Blooms. It's the Bloom Call for Help. And Chris, tell us uh, a little bit about Bloom. Thank you. There you go. Uh, Wait, without a microphone, tell well, us keep, about Bloom. Yeah. In keeping with the theme of the night, which is storytelling, I think it'd be best to tell the story behind Bloom, maybe. So I don't want to keep it too too heavy, but the reason behind Bloom is, is I think, very personal for me in this case, in that, so my father passed away in 2012, never had a single day of retirement. And part of the reason that we started Bloom was that my, my partner and I had a wealth management firm for many years, and you had to have at least a million dollars even to get in the front door of my company. And it was ironic because my own mom and dad didn't qualify, didn't have enough money to be clients of my firm. Now, I don't want you to think I'm a jerk. They, I was helping them. They were clients. But... <laughs> But had I not been in the business... Hey, Mom, we got to talk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're going to send you over to, to another firm here. My point is, is that people like my mom and dad did not have a place to go. And I think about if a company like Bloom would have been around back in the early 70s when my mom and dad were first getting started, could that have changed their trajectory? Could that have put my mom and dad in a position? My dad worked until age 63, unfortunately passed away uh, due to cancer. Never had a single day, not one day of retirement. And I think, like, if he could have gotten help at some point back then, would there have been some financial advisory firm that would have helped my mom and dad? Could my parents have had even just a couple years of retirement before my dad passed away? Could they have traveled a little bit? Could they spent more time with my kids, their grandkids? And so we think about that a lot at Bloom. The people that we're helping, the reason why we started Bloom was to help people that didn't have a gazillion dollars, that didn't have access to quality help. And the only other choice they had was to just figure it out for themselves. And in some cases, people are okay doing it themselves. But for a lot of Americans, they're, they're intimidated by finance. They don't understand the difference between large cap and small cap and, and what we were talking about earlier, modern portfolio theory. You know, they, those folks never had a chance to get the quality help that they need. And we know those people sitting back there at Bloom right now, I guarantee you, they know every single day the people that we're helping 
We may never be around to see this. We'll be out of maybe retired and long gone. But there are people right now getting help from Bloom whose lives will be forever changed. There are going to be people that are going to extend the amount of time between their last day at their job and their last day on this planet because of the work that Bloom's doing today. It's an exciting mission. It's only $5 a month. Uh, it's actually 10. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's only $10 a month. We actually said, we used to say it's the same price as, Net, as Netflix. That's now I think yes. you can say we're less than Netflix because I think Netflix yeah. is like $11 a month now. So yeah. we are less than Netflix per month. $10 a month. $10 per month. And, yeah, you can get and Joe picks up the first five. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe that's what you meant. <laughs> look, you. At the, look at the Thank time. <laughs> yes. But you had to stackyourbenjamins.com forward slash bloom with three O's. That's all you got to remember. Bloom. That's why we call it That's bloom. Right. Uh, and you can find out more. But thanks right. for hanging out with us in all three well, thank cities. Thank you for Chris. letting me be a part of this. No, it's, it's fantastic. And we love your mission. Uh, let's answer some questions. So if anybody's got questions, we'll, we'll, we got time for two, I think. But while we do that, I've got a question while we're waiting for volunteers. Uh, Carrie. I actually have a question for you. How did you get into voiceover work? My husband and I actually had a personal finance podcast for a long time. I actually had a podcast on the show Downton Abbey Mm. as well. And I created online training courses. So I got to narrate some of my own courses. So a lot of different things where I was behind the microphone, but not in the context that I am today. And then randomly one day on my way to work, I uh, had just had my first daughter, Amelie, and was looking for a new career, something else that I could do from home, something that would allow me to be more creative. And I was listening to a podcast, and I heard an interview with a voiceover artist. And she talked about what she did, how she worked from home, and it supported her family. And I thought, that sounds amazing. Sounds like something I could do. And I called her up and started getting training from her. And within a couple months, was booking work. And eventually got some agents, started, uh, was able to quit my job and do voiceover full time within four months of starting to get training. Within four months from nine to five with somebody else to working for yourself. Isn't that incredible? That's way more impressive than Doug. (laughs) Five years I've been doing this. Five years. And you've made how much money? (laughs) Oh. Oh. We'll talk about my salary later. Yeah. (laughs) But that's and, and and I know that you got flexible hours, but that also means that you're not working the nine to five anymore. You're working whenever duty calls. Absolutely. So I've got I get to do a lot of it on my own time, which is nice. But I do have directed sessions occasionally where a client wants to direct me. And the cool thing about technology is that I don't have to go into studios a lot. I do it from home. So they'll you know sometimes it's over my cell phone. There's other technology kind of like Skype where they can direct me. And so in those instances, I do have hours. Yeah. Other than that, you know, if, uh, if I'm doing an audio book and the kids are driving me nuts during the day, um, I can, you know, record at from midnight to 2 a.m. if I want to. Live in the dream. I don't want to, right. but, <laughs> but I won't yeah. say it's never happened. Uh, that's awesome. We've got two people, by the way, that we want to introduce to you who are with us today. We have the military money expert, Lacey Langford here. Lacey, come on up. Lacey's going to help us answer questions. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you? I'm better now that you're here. You were with us in Orlando. I was. I'm following you guys. <laughs> and then, and then, I'll uh, you. Th- this, yeah, you're stalking us. But this guy, Chris Costello, says, Hey, you got to come to Kansas City. Yes. And I was like, Heck yeah, I'll be there. Heck yeah. Isn't that great? Uh, so tell us about what you do. Well, I specialize in military and money. I help military service members, veterans, and their spouses stop being fearful of money and start having control and confidence with it. And I do that predominantly through one-on-one coaching. Awesome. And we also have Mr. Steve Stewart here with us. Steve is not just our engineer. Steve, had, for a long time, had a podcast called Money Plan SOS that back in the day... <laughs> Back in the day when I was starting to podcast, uh, Steve was my hero. Steve's still my hero. And you are not a believer in credit card reward points. Not at all. We don't want to start that here. No. we will take the whole show in a different direction you don't want to go. Yes. You are a cash lifestyle guy. That's right. But but you paid off your mortgage way early. Yeah. December 2015, we paid off our mortgage. We started in the year 19. Oh, gosh. I hate when everything starts with 19. It makes you sound so ancient. But we bought it on a five-year arm back in 1998. 
And then we refinanced a couple years later and finally got it down to where we just paid off the thing by 2015. And uh, there's how, no debt. No I, debt. Yeah. How old were you when you got rid of all your debt? I'm 50 now, so I've been 47. 47 years old, no debt. Wow. No debt at all. That's absolutely fantastic. Great. Yeah, it's great. No debt, no credit, no problems. That's <laughs> that, right, that was your slogan. Yeah. Yeah, for all those years. So here's the deal. If anybody has a question for our panel, there might be some swag in it. See, we've got to bribe people to ask us a question, OG. I have a question if people just want to let me get started and get warmed up. I was wondering what Doug's success rate is with that shirt outside of Sizzler. I mean, just so Ooh. the ladies know, like, Ooh. just the playing field. Like, I just, I'm just curious. I'm laying it out for 80% you. 80% oh. of the time, it works all. It's right. <laughs> it's very high. This is a spectacular shirt. <laughs> Hey, actually, though, Joe, I, uh, so a, a woman came up to me earlier. She handed me a note. She was too shy to ask a question. She wanted to b- remain nameless, but uh, this is a legitimate question that I think experts like you guys can answer. So Michelle asks, uh, what is the difference between... Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. I wasn't supposed to say your name. Uh, Michelle... <laughs> Your main <laughs> when am I going to learn? Michelle Smith wants to stay named. Yeah, so anyway, she wants to know what's the difference between an FSA and an HSA. Her husband only has an FSA. Uh, how do we get an HSA if, we don't, if he doesn't have one at work? So you might talk about what's an FSA and what's an HSA and then how she can get one. That's all them. That sounds like an OG question. What's an FSA and what's an HSA? Great question, Doug. I mean, Michelle. <laughs> No, it really was Michelle, though, huh? Yeah, okay. So FSAs are flexible spending accounts. you got to spend them by the end of the year. That's the big drawback with them. A lot of times people are going to use those for things like your uh, dependent care or, uh, or expenses like that. An HSA, you can use year after year, and so you can accumulate money in it and, uh, and, and, and use for health care spending. The big problem, though, is that if you don't have an HSA at work, you kind of have to have it tied to your health care plan. So if you don't have a high deductible health care plan at work, well, that's good because you're not paying high deductibles for your health care. But then you also can't uh, contribute to the HSA. They kind of go one in the same. The, uh, but this is, a, this is a great point for this time of year. It's important to think about that money in your flex savings account, FSA, Right now, Use because it or lose it. yeah, you got to get rid of it by the end of the year. It has to be gone by December thirty first, or the expenses by December thirty first. Somebody knows better than me on the tax uh, issue with that, but but it's for an expense for this year. And if you still have it at, at the end of that, it just is gone. Yeah, and HSAs. There's lots of. I mean, people save money in their HSAs for a long time, and we're looking at this as maybe good retirement money. Very en vogue thing to do now with HSAs is to accumulate tons of money in your HSAs when you're young, uh, invest it, and then when you get to retirement, you have this large amount of -of out-of-pocket expenses that you've never claimed, and uh, if you have a a large amount, then you can claim that over uh, a a short period of time, maybe have six months or a year of tax-free income. Thanks for the question, uh, Anonymous, Michelle, Anonymous. Anonymous Michelle. Michelle Smith, Anonymous. Uh, And then we have our new BFF, Randy, who has a question. Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> we, we love you, Randy. Okay, so this is this is this is a question I have been pondering for months now. Oh boy, I, I have got to know why three O's in bloom. Oh, there's a question. Yeah, we. Uh, where's Claire from Bloom? She just left. Claire, Our head of marketing of Bloom just left. <laughs> um, I wish, I really wish there was like a really cool story behind it. But the truth of the matter is, is that Bloom with two O's is an online cosmetics company. And it was already taken. And so we thought we'd add another O to make it memorable. Instead, now we spend half of our lives at Bloom chasing down journalists to correct the spelling of Bloom from two O's to three O's. So... Sometimes we say to potential hires, we've got a new Bridget uh, in the back of the room as a new employee of Bloom. Sometimes Bridget. we a joke on them, and we say you have to come to work at Bloom before you find out what the third O means. But in reality, they come to work at Bloom, and they find out it really doesn't mean anything. <laughs> and uh, so that's it. But the great question. You need to make up a better story. 
Like I you know. need some. That, wait, wait, I don't know. That, that alien. Good, no, that's that, a that great. No, don't get me wrong. It's a great story, but you could make up so many things. <laughs> yes, I know. I well, know. so the reason why Claire, she's back now. That the market. Oh she, no, do not point to Claire. Uh, she had a really good reason for the three O's in Bloom, and I would highly encourage you to all go to the Bloom site, Bloom with Three O's. You'll see a video that Claire produced and directed that explains the reason behind three O's. Awesome. That's a good video. I've seen it. Fantastic. And we have another friend. Hi, OG. Um, you just mentioned about the HSA. With the, You can actually, I guess, invest it. How do you find the, I guess, investments? Because every time I do an HSA, there's, you just put money in it and do nothing with it. That's a great question. Yeah, great question. The, uh, when it comes to the HSA, it's going to be it's going to be largely determined on the provider. And, and the nice thing about an HSA, as opposed to like a 401k, you're kind of stuck with what your company offers. With an HSA, you don't have to use theirs. Now, there's usually some incentive tied to it. Like if you use this one, we give you another thousand bucks or something. But you can transfer it from one HSA to the other and, uh, uh, and, and then find whatever investments you're looking for, you know, TD Ameritrade or Schwab or whoever will offer these. But, uh, but probably... The company that you have has it. We just have to. You just have to dig through the, you know, fine print to find out how to get to it. It's they're not really strong yet. You know, as a market, there's there's a lot of money there, but there's not as much money in like the four hundred one k space. So technology really hasn't caught up with how to make those really efficient and that sort of stuff yet. I, th- I think more investments are coming, don't you? Well, it is, and and the providers are going to get better at helping you with that too because it was an afterthought for a long time and now it's like oh wait people are keeping their money there longer so you guys chris must be looking also at maybe helping people then with that in the future have you guys thought about that a great question yeah hsas actually work just like 401k so i think at some point down the road that would be a logical expansion for bloom (laughs) thank you for the question and see us after the show because we've got a shirt for you so thank you very much maybe one for randy too Mm -hmm. not not quite sure maybe (laughs) He got a kiss from Doug. How much, can I, way, tee up, can I tee up a question? Do we have time before we were about to run out? Uh, we, 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 well, we, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'll take, I'll take like, that as a yes. Yeah, you know, all right, deal. Is anybody in here curious as to know when the market's going to crash? Anybody want to know when it's going to crash? Okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'll keep this one shorter than Orlando. Okay? All right, deal. So here's the advice. It does not matter. It will crash. I promise you, I guarantee you, the market is going to decline. It's going to crash. All of you will see your accounts decline in value. Okay? So let's get that, like, let's program our brains now to know that's going to happen. It's not if. It's when and how many times in our lifetime it's going to happen. So know that market declines, market crashes, seeing your account decline in value is perfectly normal. It has happened a dozen times since World War II. It'll happen another dozen times for many people in this room. The mistake that most people make in this country is when the market declines, they do really bad, dumb things. Like they stop contributing to their 401ks. They pull everything out. I want to, if there's anything you leave here tonight with, is to reprogram your brain to think about the next time the market declines or goes on or, or crashes. I want you to think, it as, think of it as a great sale. The same thing you think of when you go into a grocery store and you find your favorite, you know, OG's favorite box of cereal is Trix. If he walked into the grocery store and saw Trix <laughs> on sale for a dollar a box, he'd buy the limit, okay? But we don't, we, we don't do that when it comes to our investments. When things go down, we think something's wrong with them. I want you to think about when markets go down, to think of that as a great sale, especially for younger people in this room. You should be thinking, you should be hoping for a big market decline because you're not done buying yet. You don't need this money yet. Even if you're at retirement, even if you're about ready to retire and the market tanks, guess what? You're not going to need all your money at one point. Leave it invested because there's never been a time period in history when the market has not come back. Never. Individual stocks, we talked about Enron, I think we joked about that earlier tonight. But markets as a whole, they have never, ever gone down and not come back. And not just come back, come back and gone on to record highs. We've never seen it not happen that way. So keep that perspective in mind. We look at uh, Len Penzo, who's on our show uh, weekly, who very much says four years ago, he took his money out because he thought it was going to decline. And he says about, he talks about how much money he's lost over that four year period. To your point. Oh boy. When you sell out, you have to be right twice. (laughs) You 
you've got to be right in selling. Yes. You've got to be right to buy back in. Yes. Yeah. Did you just like give fantastic advice on our show? Like, or you're going to ruin our reputation, man. Uh, yeah. And we can edit that out. <laughs> Take that out, Steve. <laughs> edit it out. Steve. And speaking of Steve and Lacey, thank you for helping me. You guys got to be exhausted with all the question answering you did. That was tough. Yeah. It was really tough. Thank you very much for hanging out. Lacey Langford, Steve Stewart. Thank you, everybody. (laughs) Is he amazing? Garrett Phobes, everybody. Make it happen. Sing it, OG. Way, man. Pretty awesome. That's so, so cool. And then we had an issue with our recorder. So to tell you what happens next, we actually went to the room and we asked them who should be our host for the Stacky Benjamin show from here on out, whether it should be Carrie or Doug. And I think, I think, Richie, the, the audience... It's been a couple week, a few weeks now, but the audience chose Carrie. Didn't the audience choose Carrie? I think they did choose Carrie. Yeah, the audience chose Carrie. So we told Doug that he could do the credits one last time, and or the the what should we have learned? And his big what should we have learned was, whenever you get in a fight for your job, make sure you share the Stacking Benjamins compensation plan with them because most people don't like being paid in canned ham, and so uh, Carrie took over to do the credits and said, Doug's the biggest canned ham of all. And that that, uh, she would go ahead and let Doug keep his job. So Doug ends up keeping his job. But then we go um, into a period of silence for some reason or another, which I won't explain. And I'm not allowed to explain that by the rules. And we played the same game we played in Orlando. If you heard the last episode, if you didn't, it's called Never Have I Ever. And we start off with never have I ever hidden purchases from my spouse. And we only have a little bit of it because we hadn't yet detected exactly what the problem was with our recorder. And so we'll give you a little snippet of that and I'll be right back. (laughs) My mind went the other direction. So we'll just be here all week, folks. Um, Never have I ever hid a purchase from my spouse. Absolutely. I'm judging all of you. Have, yep. <laughs> Not since yesterday. Not since. <laughs> Tracy, what did you hide? Yes. Oh, my gosh, too many to count. And maybe that's why the first one ended in divorce. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, maybe. Oh, wow. I kid. I kid. No, actually, we don't even want to go why that ended. But I have, you know, you just have little things. I you put on the new shirt. Is that new? Oh, no. Oh, I've had this forever. And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Because he doesn't want to look like he's not paying attention. So mm. that, That's a good play. I remember distinctly an event when we were first married where I was going to the casino all the time. It turns out I won a lot. And so I, I had this little tie rack that spun around in a circle where you kind of hang your ties, you know. But in the top part of it was a, was a thing that you could put your, uh, like, cufflinks or something like that. An OG, to finish that story, said that he had a bunch of money in the top of his secret compartment when he won. And, uh, and his spouse found all that money. Mrs. OG found it. And so that, that didn't end well. But then we moved on to another piece which was who pretended they knew a financial term and they didn't really know a financial term. And Zach was answering his experience, making up financial terms when he didn't know what he was talking about. It happens. It happens. Can I I say one thing? I used to do customer service for Bloom, so. (laughs) Nice. I feel like we're really getting deep Fake it till you make it, Zach. Fake it till you make it. I I was a... this is horrible. Trust tree. Yeah. Trust tree. Yeah, nobody listens to the show. So this happened to a lot of you. I saw a lot of I have. I was a first year financial planner and I did. My client would say, Oh, I've got something. I'm like, Yep, I know exactly what that is. 
And then they would leave, and I would immediately go look up what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> like it was all dogs and this is horrible, but it was all dogs and ponies. It was you went, which is funny. When I was a young advisor, I always said, "Oh no, young advisors are fantastic. You should get the advisor who's in their first or second year." Now I'm like, no, 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 no. Google didn't exist back then. Google didn't, right? So I'm looking it up. Uh, yeah, no Wikipedia for me, right? Who is who else uh, pretended? No? Uh, you already, yeah. All right. We got one more? Chris got one. Never have I ever financed, meaning put a vacation on a credit card. Oh, what the heck this question was interesting two weeks ago when we asked this in Orlando because obviously we're at the home of the biggest ripoff vacation on the planet. <laughs> oh, we're not in Orlando anymore. <laughs> So how many have, so we had, a, 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 I think, a fairly well-behaved audience here because I think Disney is guilty of coaxing a lot of families into putting that big expensive vacation on a credit card because you know what? If you're a parent and you haven't taken your kids to Disneyland or Disney World, you're a bad parent. Somehow they've propagated that, that, uh, that myth. We actually did that um, two years ago. We took our kids on a 10-day Florida vacation, the Legoland, the Disney, the Universal, 100% paid for in cash. Nice. The only thing we did is we did finance all of our food on our Discover card so we could get all the cash back Probably to pay had, for part of our food. got some discounts in there, too, if I know you. Yeah, just a couple. Might have, might but have had it was dis- all paid for. I feel like I need to read a blog about this. <laughs> <laughs> I need that blog. How much, Tracy, did that cost? You did Legoland, Universal, and Disney. Is that what, 16 bags of money? Um, 17 bags of I money? I think it was. We ended up doing it for like 9 or 10, and that was airfare round trip. Yeah. So. Wow, that's yeah. still that's an expensive vacation. It was an expensive vacation, but it was a once in a lifetime. As long as you plan for it, though. I must be a horrible parent because I've never taken my kids to Disney. Terrible parent. Horrible. No, I know. Put me in that group. Yeah. Boo. <laughs> so, as a personal finance blogger, are you the one person at dinners that people actually feel comfortable asking how much you spend on things? Because he never would have asked Chris that. He never would have asked Joel that. I mean, it was just like, oh, so how much did you spend at Legoland? <laughs> You know, and it's funny, and I would tell people, I'm like, oh, yeah, we did this. You know, it's like, have you seen the meme on Facebook? I like your dress. Thanks, I paid five bucks for it. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah. It's bragging I, rights. I love this game, everybody, because as you can see, it's everybody makes mistakes, and we've got some really smart people up here. And it's not about making mistakes or being embarrassed about your mistakes. It's about going ahead and making them and getting back up and living another day. So, thanks a lot, guys, for playing. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming. That's going to do it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you.